In the last five years, the U.S. savings rate has ranged from 6.3% to 8.8%. That was until 2020 when COVID hit. In doing research for this video, I came across a crazy chart that showed a spike in savings rate up to a record 32% in April. And the record wasn't set by a little bit. The previous record was 17.3% in May of 1975. 32% is incredible. And while it's super sad that we're going through a pandemic right now, and this is definitely the cause of that spike, I wanted to put together a two-part video talking about savings rate because I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that when we are on the other side of this thing, Americans and people really all across the world continue to save more money than they used to before the pandemic. And by the end of today's video, that's what I'm hoping to convince you to do. When it comes to building your wealth, your savings rate is the most important factor. In fact, if you could save 50% of your income, you could retire in as little as 17 years. And I'm gonna prove that here in just a bit. But first, what is financial independence? Financial independence is when you have enough money saved and invested that you can live off of that savings and investment for the rest of your life. Therefore, work is optional. That means you're free to pursue your passions, tackle your bucket list, spend more time with your loved ones, give time and or money to help people, and so much more. Financial independence, FI, is time back. FI is is freedom. And in today's video, I'm going to explain why it's so incredibly important to increase your savings rate and why, in fact, I think you should aim for half. So that's going to be the why. And in the next video, I'm going to cover exactly the how. The ultimate goal? Retire sooner than you thought was possible and exit the rat race. Stop trading your time for money. But if you're going to do it, you must be resolved about it. Speaking of resolved, what's up guys? My name is Frankie. This is The Money Resolution. I put out personal finance weekly, so definitely consider subscribing if at any point during this video you're thinking to yourself, I'm definitely digging what this guy's putting down. That was weird. <laughs> like this video if you like this video and let me know down in the comments below how wrong I am. I'm just kidding. Please build me up and stroke my ego. The internet is full of bullies. Please don't be one. Or do none of that and just use this information for free to help yourself. I totally get it. I'll use all the free help I can get as well. And be sure to stick around because towards the end of the video, I'm gonna explain exactly what savings looks like and my definition of savings might surprise you. Today, I'm gonna to share some numbers that completely changed the trajectory of my life, to be honest. Saving a little bit was eye-opening. Saving half of my income, absolutely life-changing. And if saving half sounds insane and totally extreme, I get it. Conventional wisdom says to save 20%. Perhaps you heard of the 50-30-20 rule, which is you're gonna spend 50% of your income on your needs, 30% on your wants, and 20% you're gonna put away into savings. I'm here to tell you today that 20% is not enough. Let's say you make $100,000 for the sake of round numbers and you put aside 20%, at the end of the year, you're gonna have $20,000. That's pretty nice. But let's say you made a lot less than that, just $40,000, but you actually saved half. You're gonna be putting away the same amount as someone making 150% more than you. Therefore, it is not how much you earn, it is absolutely how much you save that counts most. But the truth is 20% is still good and that's a great target for you to shoot for if you're still just getting started. That's far more than the average American saves traditionally, not lately, as you saw at the start of this video. But next I'm gonna show you the power of going from 20% to 25%, 40%, and then the goal, 50% of your pre-tax income. Game changing numbers coming up next. And we're gonna do this by looking at a retirement calculator I found online via NerdWallet. I'm gonna caveat and say this isn't a perfect retirement calculator. There's a whole bunch out there. Another one I do recommend is by Bankrate. Earlier I said 40,000 and talked about saving half of that. That's actually the median US salary. The average is 58,000. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna sort of split the difference between the two and assume $50,000 for income. Let's say you're 30, you make $50,000 and you're starting with zero. In fact, all these scenarios I'm gonna lay out here are starting with zero saved. This calculator assumes a 2% raise in your salary annually. And first exercise here is gonna be saving 10%. That's not bad, that's $417 a month. And according to the calculator, you're gonna have 0.82 million at age 67, the traditional retirement age. So this calculator says not enough, you're just on your way. And while $820,000 does sound like a lot, 
Due to inflation, that isn't going to be enough come retirement. Inflation is roughly two to 3% a year. Something that cost $100 back in 2010 actually would cost $118 in today's money. So you can see how much inflation impacts prices. One of those things really strongly affected by inflation, of course, is one of your higher expenses in retirement, medical. But it's not only medical that's gonna cost more in the future, housing, food, transportation, travel, any of that 15, 20, 35 years from now is gonna cost exponentially more. So you need to be prepared. 10% is not enough. Okay, so we'll change the calculator to 20% and look, you actually did it. If you do get to 20%, which is conventional wisdom, you can actually retire potentially a couple years early. But I wanna get a little unconventional because this is just getting you barely to the finish line, which again is a good start. Let's run through some different numbers. But first, here is where I share the first big takeaway. Time is your most valuable asset. The sooner you start saving and socking away money and investing this money, the better off you're gonna be, and that's because of the power of compound interest. Compound interest is when the interest your money earns also earns interest over time, and it compounds from there. So if we keep 20%, but we start five years later at age 35, with nothing saved, will you make it to retirement? No, according to the calculator, you're about $300,000 off, considered on your way, not even considered getting close. You're missing out on compound interest. That's the problem in this scenario but I don't wanna discourage you, that'd be super mean. So let's flip to some more positive scenarios. What if you saved 30% and actually, what if you save 30% starting later, let's say age 40, you have nothing saved and you're committed to saving towards retirement at 30%. That's pretty close and you thought it might be too late to start. How about 40% at age 40? Yes, you get there. In fact, you could retire, I think it's two years early. At age 40, if you saved 50%, you could retire by age 59. Now in this scenario, I am assuming you're gonna continue to spend just half of what your income was pre-retirement. Starting at age 50, if you put away 50% of your income, can you retire on time? The answer is yes. So that's incredible. And what if you did this a lot longer? And here is where I'm hoping you're starting to have an epiphany. If you could get there at age 50 by saving 50%, what would happen if you started saving 50% at age 25? Josie Sophia Bishop, my nieces and nephew, please pay attention to this part or come back and watch it when you start earning an income. Let's start with 25% at age 20. If you're just getting started today with an average salary of 50,000, you'll outsave the 40 year old saving half of their income. If you save 50% starting at age 25, you can retire at age 47. What if you made more than $50,000 and you still started at age 25, saving half of your income? You can also retire at age 47, but you're gonna have a million more dollars to enjoy come retirement. What if you started at age 20, you saved half of your income? This is that scenario where you can retire in just 17 years. So at age 37, work becomes optional. And I'm not crazy, there are lots and lots of people out there who have retired in their 30s. In fact, Mr. Money Mustache has a really popular article out there within the FI community that's titled something like The Shockingly Simple Math to Early Retirement. So I'd highly, highly recommend you check that out next. I'll link to it in the description down below. That's the lesson that I wish they would have taught us in school. And that's the message I hope you take away from this, especially if you're 20 to 25 years young, you can retire in 20 to 25 years if you start saving 40 to 50%. And like I mentioned at the top, the next video is gonna be the how, because no, you don't have to starve or totally deprive yourself. It's a lot easier than you actually think. By the way, this calculator doesn't take social security into account because that's sort of a mystery if that's gonna be available for us. It also assumes a conservative rate of growth of 6% on your investments. Historically speaking, it's been closer to 8%. So what if it was 8%? This calculator also doesn't consider what if you start a side hustle and you bank 100% of that income? Or even better, you create passive income streams and you continue to get paid post-retirement from that passive income. This is when it gets truly, truly crazy to think of the scenarios of retiring early 
it's a lot more realistic than most people think. But you have to have the skills and persistence to start by saving at least 40, I would aim for 50% of your pre-tax income. Now, admittedly, these calculators are a bit of a simplification. In fact, this one freezes all the time. And a lot of factors could certainly throw a wedge in your plan, but it is a good exercise to go through toying with your numbers and seeing what you could save towards retirement now. And like I mentioned, another one I recommend is from Bankrate. I was going to recommend the retirement calculator from Vanguard, but when I tried to input saving half my money, I think I broke it. Vanguard's great at everything else, but I don't know why. It's so I hope this exercise gave you hope. It is never too late, number one, to get started towards retirement. And number two, you could potentially retire in half the amount of time you thought it was gonna take out of your working life to get there. It is a game changer if you can get to 50%. And again, it is downright life-changing if you can do this as young as 20 years old. But I get it, the bad news here is it can be really, really difficult to cut your expenses and actually go through the process of saving half. It's a muscle you have to build up and do this slowly and gradually over time, but when you see your net worth become positive, when you stash away $10,000 into an emergency fund, when your investments hit $50,000, $100,000, I promise you it gets a lot easier from there, and it's super, super exciting when you find yourself on your way. Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. Your attitude and persistence is everything. That's one thing you can absolutely control. What you can't control, when you get a raise or promotion, your job security, your hours if you're working part-time, mistakes you might've made in the past. You can't control whether that person on the other side of the interview table likes you or not, or is interested in hiring you for that new higher paying job. But that's okay. Those aren't the things that I focus on. I focus on what I can control, which is my attitude and saving half. Stop focusing on those things in your past. Stop beating yourself up. Stop saying, yeah, but if you're really, really about to already type that into the comments, change your mindset and change your language, start with yes and. And continue your research into this. There are tons and tons of videos echoing the same thing I'm saying. And all of us truly believe and know because we're practicing it, this is the secret to retiring early. And for me, that's what I do. I continue to learn. I continue to toy with numbers and set goals. I side hustle. I've created passive income streams and I'm working on more. Check out the money resolution, the course coming this December. I'm not hoping the market is gonna do 6% or 8%. I'm preparing as if it's gonna do 4%. I'm not hoping I inherit money or get government assistance on my student loans or that housing prices are gonna come down here somehow in Seattle. I'm not hoping I retire on time at age 67. I have completely shifted my mindset and my goal is to retire at age 50. 45 if I'm really aggressive. I'm reading, I'm reflecting, I'm making small steps day in and day out. I'm paying myself first, no matter what. And then I'm paying it forward here on the channel. So give this video a like if you haven't by now and you appreciate the information so far. Save half, spend half, retire early. Hopefully that message is loud and clear by now and you're sold on it. But one thing I need to cover next is what exactly savings means and looks like. And I mentioned at the top that saving might be a little bit different than what you're thinking of. So what is savings? Anything that improves your net worth can be considered savings. So the first thing you should absolutely do is pay off those bad debts. Number one, credit cards, and number two, student loans. So any amount that goes towards that principal, the amount that you borrowed, and it brings it down, that's what you can consider savings. And the same thing can be applied to lower interest debts like your mortgage. Anything that goes towards the principal can be considered savings. And then second is the more obvious definition of savings, which is any money that you put away for the long term towards retirement. And there's lots of places you can put your money, so I'm gonna quickly list here on screen some accounts you definitely wanna consider in order of I call most important to maybe least impactful. Starting with money you put aside for your emergency fund. This is readily available cash that's not invested. Contributing to a 401k, an IRA, a Roth IRA, or other tax benefit retirement accounts. Contributing to a 529 plan or otherwise saving for a child's education. Money you put aside in an online only high interest savings account that you don't have marked for anything. Perhaps this is gonna be money you put towards a big investment that's gonna grow in value over time, like a house. And then finally, just change in cash sitting around in a piggy bank or a savings account that has very, very low interest. Piggy bank's an account too, right? So if you're paying off debts or keeping money saved for the long run, this is what is considered savings. The goal is the same though. 
spend less, save more, retire much sooner than you thought was possible and much sooner than the average American or person, whatever. So what's not saving? This is pooling money together for a short-term purchase. A great example, I want the new iPhone that I know is coming out later this year, so I set aside $50 a month this whole year so that I can pay for it in full in cash. That is not saving. That phone is not an investment. It is not going to grow in value. I'm not using that money to pay off student loans. I'm not using that money to invest towards retirement. It's great that I'm avoiding debt, but regardless, I am spending that money on what is considered a want. And the same can be said for a new car or even a used car, vacation, Christmas presents for the family, concert tickets. You should absolutely budget and save for those things, but don't trick yourself into thinking that this is increasing your savings rate. This is simply saving money to spend money. Finally, we need to talk about interest. Paying interest is not saving. This is not impacting the principal balance of the debt or the money you borrowed. For example, if you accrue $50 a month in interest on your credit card and your minimum payment also happens to be $50 and you're paying the minimum every single month, you're not saving a dollar. And by the way, this is exactly how they get you. Definitely avoid that and pay more than just the interest no matter what each month because that's an infinite loop. You will be giving them $50 forever. You'll never pay that thing off in this scenario. So finally to repeat, what is savings? Savings is money you have earmarked for long-term retirement, ideally invested, or money that is going to pay off the principal balance of debts. So now you know what savings is. In this video, I also covered the 50-30-20 rule and why you should avoid conventional wisdom and try to do more than save 20%, ideally 50. I talked about the different accounts you can put your money in. I walked through exercises with retirement calculators and I absolutely do encourage you to do the same with some of your own numbers. I talked about the power of compound interest and I highlighted in an extreme scenario how you could technically retire in 17 years if you're super aggressive with your savings. By the way, in None of these scenarios that I go above 50%, there are people in the FIRE community that's financial independence, retire early, that save 60, 70, 75% of their income. And in the next video in this two-part series, I'm gonna talk about how they do it and how you might be able to do the same. Tune into that video next week, or if this is the future, I'm hoping it'll autoplay next for you. Let me know down in the comments below what's one big takeaway you're getting out of this video. I love to engage with everybody in the comments. Like this video if you got some value out of it. Again, it helps other people discover it. Subscribe to The Money Resolution and ring the bell to get notified so you'll know about all upcoming videos. If you want more information about saving, how to do it, the FIRE movement, I actually talk about all this in both of my books, The Money Resolution and my newest one, Money You Can Hack It. So there's a chapter on saving and retirement in both of these books. You can find these on Amazon. In fact, I'll put a link to Money You Can Hack It so you can download a digital version free in the description below, at least for the first 100 people that sign up for it. My name is Frankie once again. This is The Money Resolution. I put out videos once a week. And until next time, best of luck to you in increasing your savings rate. I'll talk to you on the next one.